Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is September 10th, 2024. Let's give a little overview on week one of the NFL's 2024 season, what we observed uh, with an eye on the fact that I'm a futures better. And what I'm really looking for are the, let's say, seven teams or fewer that have a realistic chance of winning the Super Bowl, right? That have a good chance of going deep in the playoffs so we can get leverage and we can hedge plays. Let me also give my main takeaway here. I know they lost. I know the offense looked completely anemic. I know they still have absolutely no idea on how to spot Micah Parsons and how to block him, right? But the Cleveland Browns, who went into the week something like 40 to 1 to win it all, to me are still the best futures bet on the board. They have a tough game coming up on the road against Jacksonville, right? A team that hung tough with the uh, Dolphins this first week. Uh, but just understand, they're still the best team on the board in terms of the risk-reward. You have an above-average defense. Folks, in my opinion, they're one of the best defenses in the league. You have a team that made the playoffs last year with a recognition that they fell apart in the playoffs last year. But understand, they made the playoffs last year. They have playmakers on offense, uh, Nick Chubb is coming back if he's remotely as good as he was before he left. He'll be a major addition, right? And Deshaun Watson, look at his numbers. I know he didn't do well this last weekend, but look at his numbers before he got injured last year. Right, you're talking about a quarterback who, at his best, is a franchise quarterback. And when we're talking about odds as high as 40 to 1, and I'm sure they're going to jump now that the Browns are 0 and 1, right? Sometimes you have to be the bold person who makes the unpopular pick. But just understand when you're up around 40 to 1 and you have a ticket that's at 40 to 1, if the Browns are competitive after Thanksgiving, you should find a way to be in the money, right? Let's also recognize, too, that one of the Goliaths in the division, the Ravens, the uh, reigning one seed from the AFC, they lost, right? So understand, Cleveland right now is competitive with the Ravens. Another team fell apart. We'll talk about that in this video. But let me take a step back. And let me talk about my trip yesterday to the San Francisco 49er opening game. Right now, let me uh, just say, I was raised in Queens, New York City, in a Jet family. Right? Understand, I grew up with the Jets. Right? I remember when Richard Todd was the quarterback, when Matt Robinson was the quarterback, when we were all hot and bothered over Marvin Powell. Now I know many of these names <laughs> nobody else nobody else cares about, right? But just understand, yesterday I uh, was at Levi Stadium, right? Interesting ballpark. Interesting ballpark. Uh, loud ballpark. Understand, uh, they give the Niners a decided home field advantage. Well, understand, when you are from a Jet family. I was more of a Giant fan, but my dad was a Jet fan. You understand that the Jets haven't had a Super Bowl appearance since the 1960s. You understand the gold standard with the Jets, believe it or not, is still, after all these years, Broadway Joe Namath. Right? By the way, I saw a Joe Namath jersey yesterday at the game. Right. Let me just say I was getting some food and I was walking by a guy who was wearing an Altoon jersey. He was low-key about it. 
understand the difference between teams like the Jets, where you have one Super Bowl win and you feel fortunate and it was before your time. Right, and teams like the Niners, who, of course, you look up at the board at the stadium, uh, they have a ritzy side, they literally have a side for the haves, then the other half of the stadiums, the have nots. My words. But, of course, you see 49ers, five Super Bowl wins, right? You know, you understand the number five. As I was walking in the stadium, one of the ushers was saying, People can say what they want. But I have these five rings. Now understand the difference between the Niners and a team like the Jets with one win from the 60s. Granted, it's a glorious win. Puts the AFL on the map. But just to understand, with Jet fans, you're at the stadium and the jerseys are limited, right? You see a Namath, uh, and Jet fans were out. Um, here's a guy with an Altoon jersey. Most of the people around him don't know who Al Toon is. His jersey just has Toon on it. So I walk by him and I say, Al Toon. Guy turns around, lights up like a Christmas tree. Right? I don't think Al Toon's in the Hall of Fame. But Jet fans know who he is. Right? Understand when you're rooting for a team with only one Super Bowl win, uh, hell, one Super Bowl appearance, let's be real, <laughs> right? Uh, understand that team history is really a personal matter, right? I didn't know the guy wearing the Altoon jersey. He turned around and saw me. I looked at him, and there was a moment of closeness there. Because, of course, you're surrounded, I mean literally surrounded, by guys wearing Nick Bosa jerseys, Christian McCaffrey jerseys, had some old-timers there, Ronnie Lott jerseys, Joe Montana jerseys, right? With the Niners, every other person is wearing a jersey, right? They have so many stars that Frank Gore was honored at the game. And, of course, the people in the section where I was sitting were openly saying, hey, you know, Frank Gore was great, right? You know, several thousand-yard seasons, but he wasn't Roger Craig, right? With the Niners, you have stars all over the place from different eras, right? With the nine, um, with the Jets, it's it's a little bit different, right? So just understand, you know, I saw Brett Favre Jet jersey there. I thought to myself, oh, that's clean. Who else remembers that Jet Favre was a Jet? except Jet fans, right? We remember. Nobody else remembers. Understand, Brett Favre, of course, is known as a Green Bay quarterback. But when you're a Jet fan, because we've gone long stretches without a franchise quarterback, right? Brett Favre stands out to us. So I need for people to just understand the clashing cultures Right, the Jets came out, they looked good early in the game. I know that's hard to believe now, but they looked good early in the game. Just seeing Aaron Rodgers, right? Niner fans are screaming. Aaron Rodgers calmly looks at teammates and is telling them the play, right? Because you couldn't hear yourself. And then to see Rodgers lead the team down the field, right? Jets scored the first touchdown in the game. I was laughing to myself. That's how important Rodgers was to me. Right? As I said, I'm mostly a Giant fan, but I root for the Jets in the AFC. Right? I like remembering my dad. And I saw Aaron Rodgers, and I just thought, man, this guy's important. Right? Then, of course, the dam broke. Then, of course, we got the best team in football, in my opinion. Hey, it's my video. I don't believe the best team in football are the Chiefs. I believe it's the team that lost last year's Super Bowl. The Niners took over. Now, let me just say, people need to be afraid. Right? They need to be very afraid in the NFC. 
I know Philly won. You heard me talk about Dallas's victory over Cleveland. I know Dallas won. Green Bay actually looked good before the Jordan Love injury. I'm just telling people, in the NFC, in my opinion, they're the San Francisco 49ers, and then there's everyone else. Right, folks? This felt like I was watching a horror movie. Right, Jets score the first touchdown. You know, I'm thinking about the proud Jet fans. There were a few in my section, right, who were there. You know, keep in mind, at Niner Stadium, you really don't get a chance to cheer for your team if it's the visiting team, right? The Niner presence is that dominant, right? Joe Montana is selling wine at the... Uh, at the stadium for crying out loud, right? He wasn't there. I don't know if he was there, but he was on the scoreboard. And, you know, you're looking up. They've done a good job making sure Bill Walsh's name is up on the board. Uh, they have a thing where um, they have the numbers of the Niners who are in the Niner Hall of Fame. And they have circled the numbers of guys who are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And folks, there are a lot of circles up there. Right? They show highlights, and the highlights go back to, you know, the Bill Walsh era. Right? So it's very hard when you're in that kind of environment. When you're sitting in a section and guys are wearing Debo Samuel jerseys and stuff like that. Right? Folks are actually having an ongoing conversation about the fact that Samuels has changed his name to Samuel Sr. Right? That's now on the back of his jersey. And people are talking about that and stuff like that. It's very hard to say J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 even when you're up in the game. Right? Very hard. But just to understand what happened. And the league needs to take notice. The Niners didn't have the reigning rushing champion from last year. Christian McCaffrey, one of the highest paid running backs in the entire league. They didn't have him. They didn't, they only got two catches from their nine figure wide receiver, Ayuk. In other words, folks, how many teams can be missing their top running back, one of the dominant running backs in the league, pro bowler, and can be missing their top wide receiver, missing in action, right? Their top wide receiver. And then throw down the performance the Niners did. Let's talk about that performance. First, the backup. Right, and the Niners have a couple of secrets. Let's let the country in on them. Christian McCaffrey's backup is a guy named Jordan Mason. Now, if you're in a fantasy pool, you know that the Jet defense is one of the highly regarded defenses in the AFC this year. We know the Jets were awful last year, but the defense is one with a reputation, right? The head coach, Sala, is from the defensive side of the football, right? If your fantasy pool had guys picking defenses, then sure, the Raven defense probably went before them, a couple other defenses probably went before them, but the Jets were considered really a top five to top seven defense in the entire league. Now, Jordan Mason rushed for 147 yards. Right, folks? Many of the runs had him bouncing off other players. This is not the guy running through pristine holes. No, this is the guy who had to work for the yardage. Now, 147 yards on 28 carries. Check my math on this. Gives him more than five yards a carry. In fact, for the game... He averaged 5.25 yards per carry. Now here's the secret. Believe it or not, this 5.25 yards per carry 
is below his career average. Because on 111 carries in his career, this guy's averaging five and a half yards a carry. Now, many of you may not have heard of Jordan Mason, running back out of Georgia Tech. Right? I'm here to tell you that I feel, and I'm a Giants fan, I saw Philly look good. I saw a former Giant running back hit the end zone twice. He looked good. Saquon Barkley. Folks, I'm telling you this kid, Jordan Mason, is as good as Saquon Barkley. Laugh at me, please. That's okay. I don't, I don't mind being laughed at. But after you finish laughing, look at the numbers. Folks, this is Christian McCaffrey's backup. This is a backup. Right? Understand what this means. It means the Niners, if they wanted to, could play Bear Bryant football. They could have McCaffrey running 20-odd times in the game. They can have this kid running 20 times in the game. Right? He ran the ball 28 times yesterday. The Niners don't need to pass the football. They have two horses at running back. Right? Think about that. Let's also talk about another secret the Niners have, right? The first secret is the fact that they have a horse backing up Christian McCaffrey. They have a running game that's among the best in the league, and I'm being charitable because understand their guy won the rushing title last year, and it wasn't Mason. It was McCaffrey. But let's talk about the other secret here. Right now, they're playing a Jet defense, and I'm telling you the Jets, and I know they lost, and I know the Niners scored a bunch of points, right? I know there's a recency bias. Okay, the Jet defense shut down Ayuk, right? He had two catches for 28 yards. You would think there'd be a panic. What I want you to do is to recognize here the ball distribution on this Niner team. Jawan Jennings, five catches. Debo Samuels, five catches. George Kittle, four catches. Right? In other words, you had three other guys on the team with at least four catches in a game where their primary receiver, the one they just paid more than $100 million to, only had two catches. Now the Niners, believe it or not, know what they have. Right? Because their history involves quarterbacks who didn't have the strongest arms. Believe it or not, Joe Montana did not have that strong an arm. Right? So here I was looking around, saw a lot of Christian McCaffrey jerseys. Saw a lot of Nick Bosa jerseys. So a lot of Debo Samuel jerseys. I'm just talking about the modern jerseys. Obviously, I saw my share of Jerry Rice jerseys yesterday, right? Montana, right? Okay, obviously the Niners have a bunch of jerseys in the crowd. But among the most popular was the number 13. Now, I've been talking about this guy since early last year. I'm just telling you, it's just a matter of time before the rest of the world figures out that one of the very best quarterbacks in the game is Brock Purdy. Right, folks? Purdy was surgical. He spread the ball around. The most dangerous quarterback is the one who can find the open receiver wherever he is. The Jets couldn't figure out the side of the field Purdy was attacking. Folks, it was masterful. By the end of the third quarter, and I got out of there during the third quarter, by the end of the third quarter, the Niners, without the league's rushing champion, with only two catches from their top receiver, had put up 
against the highly touted defense, 26 points. That's before the fourth quarter was played. Right, folks? This is the best team in the league by a margin. Right? Understand the Eagles, who are one of the better teams in the NFC, did not make the playoffs last year. I believe it's a mistake even with Hurts and one of the better wide receiving cores, right? I think it's a mistake to put the Eagles in the same sentence with the Niners, right? Let's talk about a team that I think is better than the Eagles in their division. Folks, the Cowboys understand who they are. Dak led the league last year in touchdowns, right? Micah Parsons, of all the players who played week one, right? Micah Parsons is one of the few, and I mean this, one of the few who is not only in the running for Defensive Player of the Year. Folks, if you looked at that Cleveland game, just realize he's really in the running for MVP. You don't know where he's going to be. The Cowboys have him all over the field. That's going to be a problem for whoever they play in the playoffs. Now, as I've said here, they beat Cleveland in Cleveland. Cowboys have yet to play a home game where they're better, much better. Right now, I still maintain that Cleveland at the current odds is the best futures play on the board. Understand, you don't have to win the Super Bowl to cash on futures. If you're the holder of the ticket and you have the possibility of hitting on a 40 to 1 in December, be smart enough to hedge against the Browns in games. Let's talk about the Eagles. You know, the Eagles look good, right? The defense gave up some points, didn't they? Now, it's my own bias, and it is a bias, right? I look at Jalen Hurts, these mobile quarterbacks, I'm not as bullish on as guys who can hang around the pocket and deliver the yards, right? I know the Eagles have this tush-push on third and short. I don't even like that. And I know Hurts is one of these weight room guys, right? I know he's one of the best athletes at quarterback. Folks, I don't want my quarterback involved in tush pushes. Right? If I'm KC, if I'm Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes, my lifeline, my future Hall of Fame quarterback, comes over to me and says, hey, let's do a tush push. I'm saying, no, no, no. I don't care what you and the offensive line think you could pull off. That's not happening because you're too valuable. Right, with the Eagles, they're doing everything they can. Now, they faded the second half of last year. Nick Sariani strikes me as the kind of personality that does not age well in the locker room. We'll see what the Eagles look like the second half of the season. Let's talk about Detroit. Many of you here online keep telling me, hey, Detroit's playing a lot of games indoors. Right? You and I know Detroit should have beaten the Niners, and I concede that in the playoff game. Right, Detroit was up big. I don't care who's the better team. Detroit should have won that game. Detroit should have been in the Super Bowl. Right, I agree with all of that. Here's what I don't like. According to NFL folklore, when the Rams played Green, uh, excuse me, New England in the Super Bowl, they claim that Bill Belichick knew he was going to win the Super Bowl. They claim that Bill Belichick told some people close to him, who obviously leaked this to the press, that he felt he had the strategy to win the Super Bowl. Then they went out, and it was a low-scoring Super Bowl. Apparently, the Rams had the strategy for Tom Brady at the time. But understand, Belichick shot down Jared Goff in that Super Bowl in a way that makes one uncomfortable. Right? Go back and look at the box score from that Super Bowl. 
Jared Goff could do next to nothing in that Super Bowl. Now, it's interesting <clears throat> that Sean McVay is an offensive guru. That's his history, right? This is a quarterback whisperer. This is kind of like, you know, Sean Payton with the uh, Broncos, right? This is a guy who knows quarterbacks. I, I get the feeling that if he had a Pat Mahomes, he would not allow Pat Mahomes to leave the building except to see his family, right? In other words, you know, if you're one of these quarterback guru types, right, a Mike Holgren, an Andy Reid, a McVay, a John Gruden, right, you want your guy in the spot, and when you feel you have your guy, you're going to make sure he's paid, you're going to make sure he rarely leaves the building. But yet the Rams allowed Goff to leave. Now, I'm a Pac-12 guy. I can tell you, Goff, hell of a college quarterback, first pick in the draft. I think the guy has skills. But look closely at this game here. It's McVay, week one, against his former quarterback, Jared Goff. Right? It's McVay without Aaron Donald. Right, this, this Ram defense didn't have that horse right up, you know, on the line causing havoc. You know, this Ram defense wasn't highly touted like the Jets were, right? The people in fantasy pools know you were sitting there and after several defenses went off the board, then you started thinking about the Ram defense. Right? Wasn't like, you know, the Ram defense was up there with even the Brown defense. Right? No, no, this is later in the draft. Now, folks, McVay slowed Goff down, didn't he? This game was so competitive, it went into overtime. Now, how's that possible? When Puka Nakua is banged up, right, has to leave the game. Right, just to understand, this game wasn't all about Stafford returning to Detroit. This was about McVay who traded Goff, going up against his former Super Bowl quarterback. They made it to a Super Bowl together. Right, and let's just say Detroit won the game, but Goff struggled. That concerns me. Right now, you heard me say, look, Niner fans know that you don't have to have that big-time arm to be a great quarterback. Frankly, I consider Montana, four Super Bowls, no picks, to be the best quarterback I've seen. Right? Brock Purdy, I'm here telling you that Brock Purdy, the last pick, of the NFL draft, not the first pick like Goff, the last pick of an NFL draft, to me is one of the elite quarterbacks in the game. But there's some dynamic with Goff. An NFL film is beyond me, but there's some dynamic with Goff that led to him leaving the Rams. Right? Understand, the Rams went out and got Stafford. Right, think about it. You know, McVay wins his Super Bowl with Stafford. The Rams are a team that like to throw the football. There's some dynamic that led to Goff ending up in Detroit, isn't there? Let's just say this Detroit win at home hasn't convinced me that Detroit's going to challenge the team they were dominating in the NFC Championship game last year, the 49ers for the conference. Let me say, too, Green Bay, they played Philly, right? You saw some of the promise with Green Bay. Love did not have his best game, although he did throw for a couple of touchdowns, right? If Love is out, that's a big hit for Green Bay. 
But Green Bay talent-wise, to me, is in the running to win the conference. Right? I just don't think they can match the Niners. Let's talk about the AFC from the perspective of futures. Cleveland. I know. People think I'm crazy. I'm mentioning them a lot, am I? Right? 40-1 to 1 going into the week. Probably get them since they lost at 45, maybe 50-1 to 1 now. Right, folks? Big game against Jacksonville. I don't know what happened in Miami. I was a little bit surprised that that game was low scoring. Right? Maybe Jacksonville's defense is better than I thought. That's a distinct possibility. Right? I'm expecting Cleveland to beat Jacksonville in Jacksonville. It's a big game for Cleveland. Let me say this. Stick a fork in the Cincinnati Bengals. Folks, Circa's big survivor contest in Vegas. Would it surprise you to know that thousands of people are out of that contest already? Because they believed in Cincinnati, and of course Cincinnati just lost to the New England Patriots. Right? Think to yourself. How many Patriots got picked in your fantasy draft in the first four rounds of that draft? Right? The Patriots are bereft of talent. Right? Gerard Mayo, maybe he's the second coming of some great coach. I don't know, but just understand, Cincinnati got beaten up that game. I did see a Cincinnati back running wild, getting all kind of yards, looking good. Unfortunately, that back, Joe Mixon, now plays for the Texans. Right, folks? He's gone. Right? Joe Burrow looked confused. This wasn't a fluke game. Cincinnati struggled for all four quarters. Well, understand, there's a debt out there. The Kansas City Chiefs remember losing to the Bengals in the playoffs. Right, folks? These superstar teams that got beaten that look back at their record and think to themselves, we should have gotten to the Super Bowl that year. Instead, we let Joe Burrow come into our town and beat us. It's even worse than that. There's another storyline that talks about how the Bengals have had luck against the Chiefs lately. That Joe Burrow and the Bengals feel as comfortable as any opposing team can feel at Arrowhead. Well, guess what? Cincinnati's going to Arrowhead next week. They're out of sync right now. Now, while I don't think the Chiefs are the best team in the AFC, I'm guessing the Chiefs are not going to have motivational problems for this game. Right? They just handled the Ravens. They've just been scared. It's not like they looked as good as the Niners just looked, where complacency might set in. No, that week one game was decided by a toe in the end zone at the end of the game. Right? Who knows whether the two-point conversion would have worked for the Ravens. But the storyline is, hey, the Chiefs were lucky to win that game. Now all Andy Reid has to do is put up a picture of Joe Burrow in front of the guys in the locker room. I'm telling you guys are going to get hot and bothered. Right, folks? I think Cincinnati starts the season 0-2. I think that could be a problem for them. Right? For the record, it's my understanding that more than 3,000 teams are out of Circus Survivor contests. Because, of course, this Cincinnati pick was one of the most popular picks. Cincinnati was playing New England at home. Right? Let's talk briefly about some other teams. You know, Josh Allen, 
and the Bills were struggling against the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> now, I know there's a crowd out there that believes in Kyler Murray. Okay, fine, fair enough. Right, but tell me what was going on in Buffalo with Buffalo's offense. Right here again. Guys like Big Game Gabe. Guys like Stefan Diggs did well. Of course, they're no longer with the team. Let's just say it looked like the team missed them. I have another problem. The same problem I have with Jalen Hurts, I have with, you know, um, Josh Allen. I don't like the idea of my quarterback rushing for 15 touchdowns. Sure, it's Hall of Fame level stuff, but you and I know that's a way to shorten a quarterback's career. Yes, Josh Allen is a great runner. Okay, fine. I didn't like the way he was running in this game. Right, let's just say the Bills, this game didn't tell me that they're ready to take the next step. I thought the offense struggled for most of the game. Right, wins will cause amnesia. Folks, the Cardinals were right there with them. Well into the second half. Let's talk about the Dolphins. Now I understand that Tyreek situation uh, with the police and stuff like that may have thrown off chemistry in the first half. But wow, they were struggling at home offensively against the Jags. Folks, you take away the offense from the Dolphins and what do you have? Let me say this too. I didn't see the consistent running game. Right, they barely win the game, and that's with a big play to Tyreek Hill. Right, let's just say the jury's out on the Miami Dolphins. I, I focus on these teams because those are the teams I think have a shot at winning the AFC. Some teams look decent, right? Um, Jim Harbaugh's Chargers look decent. I don't give them a shot, right? Um... I'm not trying to be politically correct. I believe very few teams, very few teams in the AFC have a chance to win the conference. Right? The Jets, who just got lunch handed to them, are lucky they have an easy schedule. If the Jets lose this coming week, folks, it's over for them. Because there is too many clouds out there in Jet history and fans are going to panic, right? Jets need to get to one and one This is the easy part of their schedule. They need to make the most of it. I believe the Jets have a chance. I believe uh, the Dolphins have a chance, right? I believe um, everyone in the AFC North except the Bengals have a chance, right? Not many teams have chances, Right, C.J. Stroud, he's a magician. But statistically, that Texan team wasn't that great last year. Now, maybe things have changed. Right, Mixon looks good. Right, but let's say I'm a skeptic there. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. Understand I'm making this video after week one. You should treat it as... A video made after week one every year some team is gonna step up they're gonna surprise by week eight it's gonna be obvious that the odds makers had this team wrong right we all understand that but right now week one the team that impressed me the most was the team I expected to impress me the most that's the San Francisco 49ers and Brock Purdy, right? I was at the game with a hardcore 49er fan, right? We were talking about quarterbacks. I turned to him and I said, man, I think you guys are lucky, right? I said to me, Brock Purdy might be the best quarterback you've had since Montana and Young. And it was obvious to him, right? It was obvious to him and understand the Niners have had some guys, Jeff Garcia, excellent quarterback 
as San Jose State fans, I'm giving you a shout out here. No, well, right? Excellent quarterback. But I'm telling you, Purdy is special, right? I would say the chief nemesis in the NFC to the Niners, from what I've seen, are not the Lions, right? I would say it's the Dallas Cowboys. But again, health plays a factor. Niners at running back are a little bit dodgy, right? I'd like to see Dalvin Cook actually be a part of the offense, right? Uh, they got into the red zone. Zeke scored a touchdown, but Zeke's yards per carry should concern every Cowboy fan. I'll agree. The running situation in Dallas needs Dalvin Cook to turn back the clock a bit. I'll agree with that. I'm not as convinced on Philly, right? The team with High upside are Jordan Love and Green Bay. Let me just tell you, Green Bay season would have been over had Jordan Love torn a ligament, right? We're hearing now he's only going to miss a few games. Even that might be perilous. Anyway, those are my week one thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comments section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.